Okay, in this lecture we're going to be talking about bonds that are issued in between interest payment dates. Uh, this is not necessarily a common occurrence, but there are situations where a bond issuance is for whatever reason delayed, and in that delay it doesn't, uh, the actual issuance doesn't end up coinciding with the interest payment dates, and so there's a bit of a complication when that happens. And so if a bond is issued in between interest payment dates, uh, the, basically the problem is that we have a contract and we have the rights of the bondholder and they don't quite match up. Uh, more specifically, the contract calls for a full payment on the next interest payment date. Uh, that payment is contractually fixed. However, the bondholder is not entitled to the full payment. In other words, they're not entitled to any interest that was accrued before they actually purchase the bond. And so we have this issue of what the bondholder is entitled to and what the contract calls for don't quite match up. And so how do we handle this? The bondholder must prepay the portion of interest that they are not entitled to. And so whatever amount that is, they have to prepay it. And because of the timing, uh, in a very strict sense, the bond yield will take the prepayment into account. Usually it's some small adjustment that would have to be made. Um, but from our perspective, we're always going to sort of already have that taken into account. So as we walk through an example, so the, the company issues a $250,000, 6% five-year annual bonds. The issuance takes place on March 1st, 2020. The bonds are issued at par. Uh, but in this case, the bonds pay interest on December 31st. And so the issue date and the interest payment date don't match up. And so there will be prepaid interest that's part of this uh, bond issuance. And so the amount is, of course, the two months of interest that accrued in January and February prior to the bondholder making the purchase. And so that amount is $2,500. So the journal entry is going to look something like this. And so we have, of course, the, the face value or the par value of the bonds payable. Uh, plus, they do have that $2,500 of accrued interest that's get, that gets prepaid. And so the total amount received uh, from the firm is going to be $252,500. Um, of course, most of that is the bond payable. And then the amount that is accrued, uh, there's uh, several ways that are acceptable under US GAAP. We're going to initially credit an interest expense. Uh, and so in that way, what you're going to see is later on, we make the interest payment, that expense is going to be offset through the subsequent journal entry. Okay, so now we have our first interest payment on December 31st. And that interest payment is going to be in the amount of $15,000. And uh, the nice thing here, if you want to think about it, is uh, whenever we issue a bond at par, if you remember the previous lecture, the interest expense is derived from the cash payment and the cash payment only. And so this interest payment of $15,000, uh, from that we infer an interest expense of $15,000. But the, the total interest expense in 2020 would only be $12,500 because we had that initial credit to our interest expense at the time of issuance. And so then in the subsequent year, uh, there'd be uh, no offsetting entry. Of course, we just have that same straight line approach. And so the total interest expense in 2021 would be the full $15,000. Now to make it a little more complicated, we're going to have the bond issued at a premium. And so again, we have that same approach in this particular case. Again, it's a May 1st, 2020 instead of March 1st. And so now there's four months of prepaid interest for $5,000. And the issue price, instead of being at par, is at 103% of par, which is $257,500. And so the total journal entry you can see here, uh, the interest expense is that prepaid interest of $5,000. We have the par value of the bonds. We have the premium on the bonds payable. And of course, we have the total amount of cash that's raised at the issuance, uh, $262,500. Now, as we move through time, uh, we have to remember that the approach that we use when it comes to uh, recording interest payments and interest expense is the interest uh, expense is a function of both the contractual interest payment and also the amortization of the premium. So we're going to walk through those calculations now. The interest payment uh, is $15,000. That didn't change. 
but now of course we have the amortization of the premium. The balance is $7,500. The life of the bond is 56 months. Even though it's a five-year bond, the fact is it's only outstanding for 56 months. And so one approach or the approach that I use is to figure out the monthly amortization. And then of course, over uh, a period, there's however many months there were. Uh, and so in this first year, uh, there are eight months of amortization. So in 2020, you take the monthly amortization, you multiply it by eight months, which gives you a total amortization of $1,072 in 2020. And so the journal entry, of course, there's the cash payment, there's the amortization of the premium, and the interest expense is derived from those two entry amounts. And then in 2021, there's a full 12 months of amortization. And so the premium amortization would be $1,608 with the same cash payment. The interest expense would be a little bit less uh, because we have more amortization of the premium.